All right, so I've got a King to Death Ranger here, and I'm gonna do a quick build guide on it. So if I make any uh, any uh, mistakes, you guys can learn from me. <laughs> so I'm gonna crack her open and we'll take a look. So I'm just gonna pour all the stuff here. Sorry if it's not in focus. You can look at the camera over to the right to kind of see more stuff. Um, but no, I didn't save the images. Uh, I actually just looked for them now. It's a good idea to save the images though before you, uh, when, while they're on sale, but the problem is a lot of the time, there's no time to do that. So, uh, they tend to keep them on there now. A lot of the older minis don't have that, but, uh, because, uh, Adam redid the store. So, uh, in the beginning, I'm just going to clean off all this stuff. I learned from putting together the Gladiator to be very careful when cutting off the um, the mold material because sometimes it's actually useful because there are a lot of like peg holes in these miniatures so it may actually be useful so I haven't decided uh, one thing I've noticed though with this miniature that you've got to be aware of two things um, just off the bat um, the bow is actually very fragile um, so you need to actually <laughs> thank you Jason fair to watch it rain it's gonna overflow actually this time um, but the um, there's an arrow that's actually just one solid piece so be careful um, and then the actual bowstring is one solid piece as well so you just got to be really really careful and they tend to be warped you can kind of see that here um, so I recommend a uh, uh, it's fragile enough you can probably use hot water but again be really careful um, you can see mine is the bowstring's even broken, I think. Yep, the bowstring's even broken. I can fix that, but I have to worry about it. So, uh, just be very, very, very careful with that. So, here, I'm actually going to start with that to kind of give you guys an idea. So, I'm going to go uh, again uh, when you don't know where to cut, flip it over a few times until you know. And on this one, I'm actually going to cut it way over here, just like that. And I'm going to take off the arrow as well, because it looks like she's actually pulling it out of her quiver. Either that or fletching it. I can't tell. You can kind of tell. Yeah, she's pulling it up into the... Uh, into... The, um, actually, like, she's about to draw it into the bow. So, so and I'll, here, I'll start on the arrow since this is my, in my fingers. So it's got some uh, flash on it from the mold. So I'm using a, a razor blade down very gently, like very gently. If you want to uh, stabilize it, you can also do it here. Um, but it's one of those that it may not be worth it to. Um, it may not be worth it to clean it up too much uh, without breaking it. So just be careful. You have to make that judgment call whether or not you want to risk breaking it or you know. Because the arrowhead is so small, you will not be able to pin it if you do anything. So just be careful. Very, very careful. So it should be up when you're done. And um, if it is at an angle that it shouldn't be, you won't know. Because you can kind of see it here. Like it goes off at a weird angle. Um, you won't know until you're starting to get it all put together. So don't make any rash decisions and try to bend anything. Uh, get a hair dryer, uh, use some warm water. Um, even with warm water though, you can force it too much. So it, when you do bend stuff, bend resin with heat, it does not take a lot of force. So if you're trying to apply too much force, it's not warm enough. But also be careful because too much warmth can um, really bend it out of shape. So find that nice middle ground. Warm water is usually a good place to start. All right, now I'm moving back to this bow. So there's that piece that I cut out earlier. So I'm gonna kind of pick around that until I can get, there we go. Until I can get this angle where I can cut it all off without hurting the piece. And then I don't know exactly what this is here. So it looks like her hand is right there. Her left hand is there. And this piece is non-existent in the photo. That's why I put the photo below. So you guys can kind of see what I'm building towards. And as you can see, the bowstring is broken. Um, but that's actually a really easy piece to glue in. It goes right there. So it's actually really easy to glue in. The problem is that I've got this piece here that's left over from the mold. So I have to really try to go around that. There we go. You can usually get pretty flush to it if you know what you're doing. 
And I'm actually going to, just for stability, so I don't break it, I'm actually going to glue this now. Because when I heat it up with the heat gun and try to re-bend this in place, it may give me trouble otherwise. Okay. So now that that's there, I'm going to leave that alone. And I'm going to work on cleaning up the rest of this. A lot of this I can do with just my fingernails. Um, but it looks like my fingernails are not quite sharp enough. There we go. Um, you can usually clean up a lot of the stuff with just a straight edge. And I use my nails for, for a lot of stuff just because I can have more control than I normally would. Uh, but for some things, you need a razor blade. And see, here's why I glued it in the first place. So I can have the ability to do this, to properly clean it up. Nope. I wasn't, wasn't patient enough. It came off. We're getting there. Yeah, just from a building standpoint, the Ranger sucks. <laughs> I'll paint one up on stream to keep it, but I'll probably... I don't know if... I honestly don't remember if I ordered more than one. If I did, I'll probably sell them. Oh, because this is a pain in the butt. It really is. In plastic, this would be an amazing miniature. In resin, it really sucks. <laughs> Yep, there is a delay on the main camera. I am too broke to buy a new computer. So, that's that's the delay we gotta work with. <laughs> My main computer that I typically stream on had overheating issues, and this, so right now I am streaming on my old PC. So we are stuck with what we get. It is $1,500 to get a good enough computer to, to have no lag on the main camera, unfortunately. All right, so a lot of work on this piece. So like I said, see there's this little piece left over right here. You got to get, I don't know if you can see it, it's right next to my razor blade. You have to gauge whether or not that's important enough to break this whole piece to fix or not. Because that may be what you do to that may be what is required to fix it is to break it and then that's not worth it so I'm gonna glue this again and leave it so that I can reshape it in a bit okay so that's good enough for now it's cleaned up well enough I'm gonna leave that it's right there uh, I could use a file but the problem is files require pressure and I may not be able to apply any pressure to something that thin. So. Nice job, Mr. Month. That's more what I'm talking about. Yep, that's much better. Okay, so she's... I'm waiting on that, so I'm just going to leave that and her bowstring and everything. So I'm actually going to start cutting her out and putting her together. Just her. So I don't see... Nope, oh, see? That's what I mean. So see these big holes on the base? Those are for her feet to go in, and that only works if you leave a little bit of this mold just like that. Because then she'll actually be stable. And the same with this one. Leave a little bit on the end. Yep, just like that. Alright, so I'm going to dry fit. I always recommend you dry fit these. Oh, that's great. Goes together perfectly. Let me check the back. Always make sure you rotate these. Sorry, I'm trying to keep it in camera. There we go. Fits perfectly. So I can glue that. Um, make sure you check the legs for lines like this one. This one right here that goes all the way down. Um, mold lines can be a pain if you don't get them right away because you won't notice. We've got some files here. 
you'll notice once you prime it because there will um, the primer will catch especially if you prime it a little darker than the resin the primer will catch uh, but it won't catch right in the middle of that groove um, so then you'll notice and you'll kick yourself because you you'll have to deal with that through the whole painting process depending on how you primed your miniature so best to get it now it looks like it goes all the way down to the ankle so Same on this leg. Um, looks like it's on the inside of her leg here. Inside of her thigh. Going all the way down. Because that's where the mold would have been. And, and no matter how well they do it, the uh, the molds still have a little bit of a gap where the resin is. Um, where the two halves of the mold meet. And then the resin will pour out a little bit. And that's what causes this. It's annoying, but I mean, it's what you, what happens when you get resin miniatures. It's just part of the process. See, this one's a lot more accented, actually. So I'm taking my nail here. I actually have to use the razor. Mine is pretty dull, so what I just did here may not work for you. You may end up if you have a sharp razor, it'll go all the way through. So just be careful. added a little too much glue so we'll see if it starts spilling out nope doesn't look that way sometimes if you add too much glue it's a good thing because it'll kind of gap fill but sometimes it's not a good thing because it'll start spilling out where you don't want it to there we go all right let's see if she actually fits where she's supposed to fit she does so I'm going to glue her in now, actually. Yep, that's the place. The lantern is on the front in the photo. So there's a little bit of give now that she's not quite glued in yet. So now's the perfect time to put her in there. And it looks like these pegs are perfect, but this one's a little long, so... You just kind of have to judge that for yourself when you're doing it. There we go. She's in there. There's a little bit of a gap at the bottom of this one, but it's okay. It's manageable. Alright. So I'm going to do her head first because... See? Uh, here's a perfect example. Yep, I was about to cut it, but look at the bottom of there. There's actually a peg. Tiny one. I don't know if you can see that. There's a really tiny peg. So I'm cutting more of this off than I need to, or less, and then I can kind of work around to get to that peg. There, because that's actually going to be useful to put on her head because it looks like they planned for a hole that it's probably going to dictate where she's looking. Yep. So I'll be able to glue that on, but I had planned for it. Uh, it looks like a lot with these newer ones, they're using those peg holes to give it more structure, which is smart. But at the same time, it makes it a little tricky if you don't plan for that. Like me and the gladiator. <laughs> yeah, she's starting to look really good. This would actually be the perfect pose to add different weapon options if you wanted to do so. But I want to try the bow, so. And it looks like the quiver is a little bent, but not bent enough to where it will it should impact it any. At least in my opinion. So I'm just going to glue it on. Especially the uh, where it is on her back, it shouldn't matter. And then she has this little belt knife that I'm going to cut out. Okay, so I've got to figure out her arms first. So I'm going to look at them over. Yep, that's why there's a there's a mold line. You can really see it here in the in the image. There's a mold line. 
that one's actually where we require this. So I'm actually gonna go on the side first. So this is using the side. So like I can show you on my hand. Don't do this yourself, but I'm going like this. Scraping like that. Not cutting, I'm scraping. That's why I didn't cut myself just now. But I also use a really dull blade for a lot of my work. I'm used to it. Um, if you're using a sharper exacto, just be very careful when using any of these techniques. Alright, I think I got rid of most. Nope, see? I turned it around and now I can see more. I actually have to cut some now rather than scrape. I may have to sand even. It's a pity that it's on her arm, but that mold is that uh, that line is actually really sharp. Now I actually have to file out more than I did so that there's not a because I filed so much down it creates a plane so her arm would look like normal and curved and then on one side it'll be like flat <laughs> so I have to um, file a little more than I would planned because I need to smooth that out looks like this is the one that goes down here how's it going pretty good I'm building a mini. Ooh. I see that. That's fancy. How you got the overlay thing to work? They, uh, it automatically chroma keyed. Spiffy. Yeah. That's gonna be great for these build guides. There. There's the last one I built right there. Nice. Okay, so it looks like this one does not need a peg, or does it? Nope, it doesn't need a peg. So there's this peg here that is not useful. So I can just cut that off now. So what are you going to be doing, Panda? Oh, I don't know. I have a half hour. I got the mounting stuff on Pride's project setting up. Good. See, now here's the part where I gotta start planning. Because I may need to do the, um, use the heat gun here in a second. So. So, I'm gonna attach her other arm. Oh, this one has just as bad a mold line. It's, this one's even worse, actually. I don't know if you can see that it kinda, like, goes over the edge. Oh, yeah, this one's really bad. Part of this is, um, Nope, there's a really bad one on either side. It's a pity. Yeah, it's a really bad one. At first I, I thought it was like an arm arm guard for the archery, but nope. And it's that way on both sides of her arm. It's a pity. But it's good to check it out now so that I don't make that mistake and have the that huge mold line when I start painting. If you gotta deal with it, you gotta deal with it. And it's a pity too, because there's a little piece on the edge where um, it looks like she has something tied. Some sort of arm bracelet. Um, but I had to cut that off because to get any sort of purchase on this model, I had to, I had to get rid of that.
Okay. So I'm going to glue that arm on, and then I'm going to... No, no, that's a tassel. She has these little um, loops on the back of her hood. I thought they were something that got stuck, but they weren't. So. And the reason I'm doing gluing the arms in early is because that'll let me know where I have to um, position the bow here in a minute. So, because what? Well, actually, I have to position her hand as well. It's going to be a little tricky. So I can position her hand and the bow. Actually, no, I, I can do both. It's fine. All right, so I'm going to grab out the heat gun. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do all these um, before I do that. I'm going to attach all of these here quick. Because then I don't have to worry about that. And then all I have to do is the bow. I'm going to cut out all these little bushes. The Ranger and the Gladiator are actually a really nice little set. This looks like they belong here. Um, worst case, uh, when you're trying to figure out where stuff goes here, um, try to put it all in. Here, I'm dropping it. Try to put it all in, and then you can move it around after the fact. Nope, there doesn't look like there's a tall bush right there. So. This must go either in the middle or on the side. Oh, that goes right in the middle. Right there. Just like that. So, I'll glue that one in first. And I'm using, for this, I'm actually using um, super glue. Go there for sure. There's usually a groove in the bases here, um, and there you can see there's usually a flat area on the under underside of each of these pieces. Um, and that, sorry, I was centered. There we go. And that is what you're trying to mesh to the bottom here. There, perfect. Just a few more little bits. And this one on the corner, I think, goes right here. Probably. Maybe not. Maybe it's the other one. Yep, the other one. I have a little piece of the mold left that I have to cut off. Otherwise, it won't quite fit in. There we go. <laughs> See you later, Quickster. I'll make sure to send that out to you, okay? Quickster won the last uh, monthly giveaway, so. Looks like there's a thing that goes right here on the edge, which is this. Looks like they're broken branches and stuff, like she's in the woods. So that's cool. There, it actually goes over the edge of the base. That's crazy. It's cool. It's cool, but crazy. And then I have this other strand that I believe goes right in. Whoa, don't do that. It goes right in here. I can't tell what direction it goes. Yeah, bigger on the inside, so. Very Doctor Who. Perfect. Perfect fit. Okay. Now the hard part begins. You won't really be able to see what I'm doing until I move it. So, and I actually have to go grab my heat gun because it's not plugged in. Okay, so, a Wagner heat gun. 
Um, it gets pretty, uh, pretty hot. So, um, you have to hold it. I put it on low and I hold it pretty far away from the piece I'm trying to soften up. So it's just a really, it's like, think of it as a really strong hair dryer. Um, it can get things really hot and like bending, me um, bending soft metals and stuff. So a lot of uses for curing and for heating stuff up and bending it. And I use it for resin. Oh, the, <laughs> the, uh, the piece here is, is light enough that I have to point straight down at it, otherwise it's blowing away. Oh, actually, before I do that, um, it helps if you have like a hook as well, or a, or a plate that can withstand the, the heat when you set this down, if you have one. All right, so I'm actually gonna put, because I knew I'd have to bend this, I'm actually gonna put glue here in advance on the arm. I just put it on the arm right here, right there, in advance of attaching the bow. Nope, don't do that. Stop it. Keeps trying to blow away. It's not gonna take a lot with this to soften it up. Nice thing is, as well, I can tell that it's working because my 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 pad here, um, my uh, cutting mat, is uh, it kind of moves as well. So, wow, it actually straightened itself out for the most part. So I don't have to mess with that at all, which is amazing and very fortuitous. I'm lucky with that, actually. <laughs> I didn't want to have to shape it for fear of breaking it, so this is actually really nice. Same with this arrow though, so I'm going to have to be careful. Might have to use the heat gun again, unfortunately. I love it when super glue sticks to you and not to the model. Isn't that the way of it though? Nope. Come on. Not to me. It still wants to stick to me. But I can't have that because it'll break. Attach some more super glue to her hand. I'm going to very gently try to attach it to her. I think that's pending in the other room trying to connect the wireless cameras. Which will be pretty interesting for the stream. Yep, I hear it. So it's like right down between her fingers. Oh, there's actually a slot. There's a slot right there uh, for structural stability of the model too. So give me a second. I need to glue that. So I can connect the two. So it does look like I need that heat gun. Dang it. Unless I get really lucky here. Come on. Tell me it's already good with that.
I almost had it. Yeah, it looks like it isn't, it just isn't quite the right angle. I'm getting there. All right, I'm gonna use the heat gun one more time. Her hand is actually pretty stable, but the arrow is bent. So I'm gonna use the heat gun really quick. Um, if you type exclamation point glue Nero hero, it'll show you here in a second. I'm gonna use the heat gun really quick. The heat gun is actually really hot and hot enough to where it's bending it already, so. All right, I gotta hit it one more time. It's almost there, sorry. I'm trying to keep it centered. It's almost there. That is really all it takes. It's just the end here that I have to bend. There we go. I think that's as good as we're going to get it. Still a little bent, but I think if I do any more, then I'm going to break it. So. Gotta do it one more time. Yeah, the Ranger's really bad. One of the worst I've ever seen. So I'm glad I'm doing a guide for it. <laughs> it straightened itself out. What do you know? It literally straightened itself out. And the glue should hold then. So, it was broken. Or, not broken, but bent. Now it's perfect. The bow and the, um, and the arrow are both perfect. So now all I gotta do is attach the quiver and her little knife. I don't know where... Oh, I see where her knife goes. Okay. And I noticed there are some more... One more little piece of grass. I don't know where that goes, but I'm going to find out. Oh, I see it. It goes right down here. If I don't... There it is. I set it down, I didn't know where. <laughs> yeah. Tweezer time. They're pricey, but I love these Citadel tweezers. Add a little more glue. This piece isn't quite going in right. There we go. All right. So I got her little knife and I got her quiver. Okay. All right. Goes right on her hip. So that's where it's going. Try to keep it centered there. 
it goes right on her hip. And then she has a little knife as well. So the knife is actually worth gluing. It's worth gluing the knife. And it looks like there's a special spot for it. I think she has a peg. Yep, there's a peg hole right here. Let's see, sorry. Right there where my finger is. And that's where the knife goes. So. Again, tweezers. Okay, now we know. Attach the knife before you attach the quiver. Oh. That's why you guys watch the video. <laughs> okay. It's okay, I can angle the knife. It won't be the way it is in the art, but that's okay. Come on. I would have it more this angle anyway if it were me, because then you can pull it a little faster. Okay, adding more glue than I should. But you're going in. No, up, up. There we go. There, just like that. Okay, she's done. Let's see if I can show her off. Sorry her in camera. There we go. There she is. All done. One ranger. This is going to be a heck of a lot of fun to paint, but she was a bitch to put together. <laughs> uh, so there she is. A really nice mini, but really, really tricky to put together. 